Hey everyone, it's Jack from Cultaholic.com, joined by Ross and Matthew, and Royal Rumble season is upon us. I am indescribably excited. Ross, are you excited? I cannot wait for a bit of Rimble Rumble, Jackie Matthew. That's the second time we've done that. Do you get the reference this time as well? I didn't the first time, but I did the second time, pal. And of course, I'm excited. If you don't believe me, feel these nipples. How are you doing, Jack? <laughs> Let's have yeah. a look then. Let's have a look then, Matt. <laughs> Patreon.com. <laughs> I'm excited as well. I can't believe that it's already been a year since the last one. What a weird time we live in. Um, now, this is a pictures video. Uh, that's very interesting because, of course, what it means is the golden rule that we always follow it's not, not what we, what we think think's going to happen. happen. It's what, it's what we, we want, want to happen. happen. Yeah, get in. get in. Come on. What that means is that we'll all go around in a circle, myself, then Matthew, then Ross. We'll all pick. No, sorry, I'll go last because I'm the host. Yeah, yeah, Ross, then Matthew, then myself. We'll all Ooh. give a pitch each. We'll go around three times. And in the end, we'll be left with nine wonderful pitches for what we want to happen at this year's Royal Rumble. Without any further ado, Ross, could we have your first pitch, please? I am laying the sauce on thick with my first pitch. I'm going to the arse end of the men's Royal Rumble match where the sauce will be put on the arse and hopefully massaged in very, very tenderly. Number 27 enters. Coming down to the ring is Roddy Strong of the Undisputed Era. We fanny on for a bit. Number 28 coming down to the ring. It's Kyle O'Reilly of the Undisputed Era. We fanny on a bit more. Number 29 comes down to the ring. It's Adam Cole, ba 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 of the Undisputed Era. He comes down to the ring for number 29. We find out eventually that these three, because unfortunately Bobby Fish is injured and couldn't compete, could he, sir? We've got to keep things realistic here on the pitches, don't we? Um, we find out eventually these three lads, in their dastardly ways, they've made a deal with the devil. They've made a deal with Daddy Papa Triple H himself, who, by the way, isn't dead. He's been posting stuff to Instagram since he was made to disappear <laughs> by Alexa Bliss and the Fiend or whoever did it on Raw a couple of weeks ago. Number 30, which, of course, will have been announced on Backstage. More on that in a bit from me. But in this scenario, it's somebody as devastating as Brock Lesnar. Let's just say it's Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar comes down to the ring. Undisputed era. They've cleared house. They're waiting for the beast to come down the ring. They're pooping their pants. They're visibly shaking. They're worried at what's about to happen. Everybody and their dog watching the Rumble of 2021 is thinking, wow, Brock Lesnar's got this in the bag. He's going to eat them and win the Rumble at a canter. However, however, lads, using tactical offense, cunning, and ideally, a bit of poo housery. Undisputed Era, as a threesome, eliminate Brock Lesnar. This is when Triple H appears on the ramp, and this is where we find out they've made a deal with the devil. And somehow, Triple H comes down to the ring. I say somehow. He uses his legs to come down to the ring. He's pointing at Adam Cole going, yeah, you're my favorite, you, Adam Cole. Yeah, you're the future of the business, brother, brother. I fancy you a lot and all that stuff. And it looks like Roddy and Kyle, as part of this deal, they have agreed to step to one side, eliminate themselves, and allow the leader, 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 leader of the Undisputed Era, Adam Cole, to win the Royal Rumble match. <clears throat> Roddy, being the no-good high school jock idiot that he is, he steps over the top rope without even batting an eyelid. But Kyle O'Reilly, the little weasel that he is, he just he turns on Cole, throws him over the top rope, and Kyle O'Reilly wins the Royal Rumble. Undisputed Era are then put on the main roster because I think we're spinning my wheels in NXT when it comes to the Undisputed Era. Kyle O'Reilly is heading for a main event match at WrestleMania, and between now and then, Adam Cole Babe obviously is going to be upset about that. So we have a long and winding road involving Cole and O'Reilly. But there we have it. On our way to Kyle Mania. That's my pitch. Oh. There's a lot of twists and turns there. Oh, it's twisty. <clears throat> right. Um, the first thing, because I like it generally, but the first thing that jumps out to me was, so the rumble's nearly over by the time, everyone's been eliminated by the time number 30 is announced, which well, doesn't it, usually it, happen. It could it could happen, just it could coincide with, you know, there might be two or three left in and you hear Lesnar's music and during that time the, the two other lads get eliminated. They could be in the ring when Lesnar's there. I just need it to end up in a predicament where it's sort of, the Beast looks like he's just going to eat all three members of the Undisputed Era, but they don't because there's more of them and they're clever. That makes sense. Would this then lead to... Who's the babyface in this scenario? There's so many double crosses going on. Got to be Kyle, hasn't it? Right, yeah. Yeah, I guess so. But everyone would love the fact that they'd just eliminated Lesnar as well. Yeah. Oh, 
Double, yeah. Double face turn, one after I'll, the other. I like it as well because it's that leads to Kyle versus one of the champions, but it also opens the door for Brock Lesnar versus Adam Cole, which I'd like to just see out of curiosity, see how far Lesnar could throw Adam Cole. That'd be pretty good too. <laughs> it's a yes from me, Ross. Or how far Cole could throw Lesnar with those arms. You know what I mean, Vince? <laughs> you know what I mean? I do. It's a yes from me, Ross. I like it. I like Thank the twists. You. I like the turns. I like the deception. Matthew? I didn't want to like it because it's NXT, but I want to get the likes on this show and show how lovable and likable and down with the kids I am. So, of course, yay, the Undisputed Era. Woohoo! And, <laughs> of course, if they're on the main roster, that means less than one NXT. Fantastic idea, Ross. Love it. Love it to pieces. Also love the fact they got rid of Brock Lesnar. That's always a good sign for long-term booking. And also like the fact that you use the expression poo housery which always makes me think somehow of Poohhausen, like Danhausen, but made of poo. So, <laughs> thumbs up, lad. Very evil. Very stinky. It's a great start of the video, there's no question about that. Matthew, can you uh, can you carry this on with your first pitch? I'll do my best. Time to smack my pitch up. It's down to number 30. There's some wrestlers in the ring, doesn't matter as you'll see. Say Big E, Cesaro, whatever. Countdown starts. Three, two, one. Meh. Crowd goes quiet. What's it going to be? Crowd goes really quiet because there isn't actually a crowd. It's realised. And all you hear is, I'm afraid I've got some bad news. Oh, my God. It's bad news, Barrett. It's bad news, Barrett. He's here. He's here. He heads to the ring, walking and smiling like his Billy Big Bollocks. Uh, <laughs> but before it gets the rumble... He goes, ah, oh, I think I'll talk on the mic for a bit. Crowd's like, yeah, yeah, he talk on the mic. We love it when he does that. He grabs the mic and goes, I know you were excited for the return of Bad News Barrett. We were, we were. But I'm afraid I've got some bad news. <laughs> he said the catchphrase. He said the catchphrase. No, I actually have bad, bad news. Listen, this is a news announcement from not Bad News Barrett, but Wade Barrett. I didn't come alone. <gasps> and then Timothy Thatcher, Joe oh. Gacy... Leon Ruff, what? and I don't know, Nick Gage, jump the ring <laughs> and eliminate everyone. And I'm way Barrett to scupper in and win the Rumble without doing anything, rending it, as sure, and announces that he is back with the new, new, new Nexus to emerge <laughs> victorious. And they all leave in a large car together, dubbed <laughs> the Lexus Nexus. <laughs> oh, the Nexus Lexus. Which, whichever. Which, uh, whichever <laughs> I'm not that picky, as you can tell by the state of this. And I think they're going to need some NXT love if they're going to have a hope in hell of filling two days of WrestleMania, not just Raw and SmackDown. Uh, or it's going to look like a meal deal sandwich, that 70% mayo. So need some Nexus stuff, need some NXT, a new angle. Uh, I was going to have Wade Barrett take ownership of 205 Live as a stable, but to be honest, we only know things. Do we only get a push if they're 10 years old or above? So... The new, new, new Nexus it is. I like that one as well. So, partly because I've always loved how the Nexus are called the Nexus. And to most people, that's just a cool sounding name. But to us, that's yeah. obviously the people who run the metro system here in Newcastle and Sunderland, the transport system. So I like I liked always picturing them as like as like representatives of the metro uh, on strike or something. Yeah, right, Jack. That could be like how Retribution, they all had new names and stuff. Here's <laughs> North Shields. Here's Felling. Tag Team South yeah. Shields. <laughs> Broccoli wins. <laughs> Broccoli. Oh, no. No, no, no. <laughs> the Not Beast the song, Incarnate please. Broccoli wins. <laughs> oh, yes. We need to name them all after different metro stations. And we'll take you on at Gateshead Stadium. Yeah. And we'll make you sit on the front seat where everyone has a piss. Oh, and I thought that was just a rumour until one night, quite late on, I was on my way home on the Metro and a, and a guy actually asked me if, if I could move so he could have a piss, yeah, at the front yeah, seat. That's why you do the pissing. And I just said, yeah, I wasn't going to stand in his way. I'm not going to uphold the law if I'm at risk of getting weed on. Not at all. And it if, was, you, it was, if, you put, if you don't win the match at uh, Felling, <laughs> then you will be forced to sit at the back seat and stare out the window and then look at something else after 10 minutes in your eyesight's all like that. Or or stare that out. That was the very back, specific. I apologise. <laughs> or stare out the back seat of the front carriage, where you've got to awkwardly avoid eye contact with the person at the front seat of the back <laughs> yes. carriage. As you both go, this is very niche. This is very. Yes, be some we're getting a bit listening. silly here. I think there'll be some people listening who love this, but apart from yeah, I'm trying to think of a finisher name. What I can think of is like stand clear of the doors, please. I, I, I can't think of any. Get off the metro. 
<laughs> He's hit him with the get off the metro. No. <laughs> um, right. It's a yeah. I mean, it's a yes from me, Matthew. I don't know what yeah, else to really yeah, yeah. say. It's a yes from me. With, with as well, without with or without the added metro based shenanigans as well, Ross. It's a yes from me as well. Only thing missing is a Michael Tarver rap. That's the only thing missing from this entire scenario. But viewer, trust me, my other two pitches are serious. Just to, in case people Uh-oh. are like, in case people are like, you know, losing interest with our niche references and whatnot. Fair enough. Yeah. We're not good at niche references on this show. <laughs> are we Jack the Jobber? <laughs> no, my first pitch is actually serious. It's quite a serious one, sadly. Um, this, I just had a thought about what I would really like to see from the Rumble. And one of the exciting things about this year's men's Rumble, and I'll get to the women's one later on, is that um, really there's quite a few candidates who could win this one. And I don't. And a lot of people seem to be focusing on the SmackDown side of things, thinking that someone like Brian might win. Whoever faces Reigns is someone who might win the Rumble. I think it should go the other way. I think Roman's got enough of a storyline about him that he doesn't need the Rumble winner to challenge him. He can be the other one, if that makes sense. I feel like it needs to be Drew, who would hopefully be Goldberg, who needs the Rumble winner to challenge him. And even though they've just wrestled, I feel like it should be Keith Lee. So my pitch is that Keith Lee wins the Rumble, but specifically, I'd love... You know the Rumbles where there's a bit of a mini-match at the end, like Michaels and Taker in 2007, where the final two have a bit of a match of their own for like 10 minutes or so? I want that, but maybe like the final four go on for a while. And I think the ideal four that I could think of would be Keith Lee, Brian, Cesaro and Nakamura. And they just have an... My pitch is essentially they do really good wrestling. (laughs) And then eventually Keith Lee wins, goes on to Mania, beats Drew. The negative, the downside of this pitch is obviously that Keith and Drew have wrestled not long ago and Drew won. But I believe in Keith and I think he's got star quality about him and I'd like to see him win. So that's my pitch. Last eliminating... Probably Brian, to be honest, but they shake hands afterwards. Ross? <laughs> I was waiting, I was waiting to, to see who would blink first. Then. <laughs> uh, yes, I do enjoy this pitch because, Jack, you haven't forgotten about Keith. No. And that's the most God. important thing here on the Royal Rumble 2021 pitches. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I'd. Uh, Keith needs big matches. That's a big match you've got there in the hypothetical. I'm all on board. All on board the Keith Mobile. Not, the <laughs> Not to be uh, confused with the Nexus Lexus, of course. <laughs> Matthew, what do you reckon? Yay for Keith Lee doing stuff, but right now with the period that he's in, after losing clean to Drew, after getting powerbombed into oblivion, after landing his whole head, I think it'll be counterproductive. Fair enough. Because if he was going to win, he'd have some build-up. Like Nakamura or Cesaro, he wouldn't be losing clean to Drew on Raw. So I thought it would be a bit... Mm, Oh, wait, we're nice on the show. Uh, Keith Lee, give Keith Lee, no. viral video, viral mate, video. Mate, thumbs give up, it a, thumbs give up. Give it a no, give it a no. I don't mind. I can take it. I can take it. Oh, in that case, it's a... Uh, it's, uh, use a reverse psychology. I'm like not, it, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, honestly. I can't do that. No, no, positive thoughts only. It's a good idea. Keith Lee... What a good way of him redeeming himself, actually, then. Going, yeah, I lost you on Raw, but now I'll be in the Rumble. I get to... Yeah, what a good idea. Right, okay, well, thank you for that hesitant thumbs up. Um... God, we've been around once already. We'll go to Ross's second pitch. We're flying through these. But one thing I'm not liking about the build-up this year's Royal Rumble is WWE just announcing who is number 30 in the men's Rumble on backstage. I don't know when this is get, uh, getting aired, but I, I presume it's on the Saturday before the Rumble. Fair enough, back in the days when we had like matches where on the line was the number 30 spot. But in my opinion, just announcing it willy-nilly is just bollocks. Yeah. If whether they have reason for it or not, it's just bollocks. It takes away the magic of the Royal Rumble. So the only way we can make this palatable is for a certain member of the WWE backstage crew to announce they are number 30. All right, lads? Booker T. Yeah. Booker T, of course, is <laughs> going to be joined. Oh. I was Booker waiting T. for it. <laughs> Booker T, of course, is going to be joined by Renee Young and Paige. And this is how I need Booker T announcing himself as number 30 in the Rumble to go down. We know as well that on Sunday at the Rumble itself, Jive Bunny, he'll be performing alongside Booker T. Bunny. <laughs> oh, I'm going to get all kinds of comments going, oh, you don't know who he is, do you? I don't Bugs know. Bunny's going to be performing alongside Booker. <laughs> but um, during the, the Bunny 
and the Booker's appearance where Booker T is dressed in his ring gear. It looks like he is ready to do the wrestles, enter number 30, and win the Royal Rumble for the Reality of Wrestling YouTube channel or something like that. Bunny's singing the song. Booker's down there looking menacing. But then I need Booker T to do a John Barnes-esque rap. <laughs> You've got to kick and punch, but do it at the, at the right, right time. time. You can't be heel or face with a gnarly clothesline. They'll always hit you or hurt you. Like war Geordie Pack, there's only one way to beat them. Call Geordie Pack. Can you dig it, sucker? I am Booker T. And what you're looking at is our friend of CMP. The Fed backstage this is our crew i'm gonna step to one side and let phil come through no 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 look in wow. my eyes wow. what do we see wow. cm punk comes down to the ring and he wins the rumble from the number 30 position <laughs> there. Love... it's my pitch <laughs> i love the thought First of all, it's a yes for me, obviously, but I love the thought of Ross at about 2 a.m. last night just <laughs> writing this. When did you write it? I was saying to Matthew, Matthew was saying he has to go and make a cup of tea. He sits there, phrases at his computer, can't think of anything for these videos, goes and makes a cup of tea, and they all come to him. I was sat there last night in the office, thinking, I'll get me pictures done, then I'll go home, and nothing was happening, so I was like, bugger this, I'm going home. Sit down on the couch. Just flicking through YouTube, World in Motion comes on. I'm thinking Booker T's got to sing this and introduce CM Punk, hasn't he? <laughs> Whoa, that was quite something, that. I liked how it was somewhere between the John Bonds rap, but towards the end it started to turn into the Donkey Kong rap, the DK crew from the N64 game. That's if exactly Ma what I intended to happen, yes. Did you not think that, Matthew? And he was like, duh, 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 duh. You know? Dude, those rappers make it look so easy, fit all those words and those lines, honestly. <laughs> um, uh, oh, sorry, go on. Yeah, I've already said it was a yes from me. Yeah. I mean, so far we've done the Metro, Gateshead Stadium and Felon and all that stuff. Now we've gone on to John Barnes, The World of Motion and Jive Bunny. I mean, fantastic. The niche audience we have caught out for ourselves is enjoying this and everyone else hates us. And we wouldn't have it any other way. It's a thumbs up, Ross. I would have given you two, uh, two big thumbs up if the thing had been, here's my buddy, Phil, and then CM Punk comes in. And like, oh my God, CM Punk at the Rumble. And he goes, oh, oh, express yourself. It's one on one. Just sings the song and then leaves. And just actually do just the continues the introduction, introduction for Booker T. Is Jive yeah. Bunny not mainstream? Because I had a Jive Bunny album when I was a kid. <laughs> I think I did as well. Jive Bunny. <laughs> there was and a bunch of albums, mixes. wasn't there? Oh, they're a and British the master... novelty pop act. Oh. Yeah. yeah. And also yeah, performing band. at the Royal Rumble on Sunday, of course. Oh, well, yes, obviously, not, obviously, not Bad Bunny. We know Bad Bunny's playing. I know. Did you see on Twitter? And just that for people who are going to hear this, not get it. Famous, well, famous in the UK. The Royal correspondent Jenny Bond's done a video for the WWE UK Twitter account. All right, she's what the, part of World Emotion is she going to sing? No, no, just <laughs> when we're talking about like niche British things, she's like, I'm your Royal Rumble correspondent, Jenny Bond. And I was like, what? How have they got her into this? Jenny, what's happening? You can't be wrong. <laughs> something's it's, good. They needed, honest, they needed Mark Austin for that bit, didn't they? <laughs> it would be especially fitting for the oh. NXT UK roster. To be honest, whenever whenever something involves world in motion, I'm already it's a positive response from me. It's one of my favourite parts of any international tournament is the return of World in Motion and Three Lions, two of the mm. finest songs oh. in human history. Yeah, I had my I had a, a Waddle and Hoddle on last night, Diamond Lights. <laughs> not Darling, so good. Darling, I love no, you. Not so, not so good. I you see always the, need you. Did you see that Glenn, Big Glenn was on The Masked Singer? Was he? Yeah, he was one of the he was one of the costumes on there. He was singing like that sort of like, he was singing more like swing, like what Vinnie Jones would, but he wasn't as good as Vinnie. Obviously not. No. Anyway, it's a, it's a big yes from both. Did you say yes as well, Matthew? I did, yes, even um, before the the lovely discussions there about all the novelty football songs. It's well, a thumbs have, up from me. Come on, England. Well, could we have... We're saying in. Could we have your second pitch, please? I've got to follow that. Oh, all okay, right. Uh, near pressure. Uh, okay. Jimmy Uso is ordered to win the Rumble by <laughs> Big Papa Table himself, Roman Reigns. Just go and win it. Yeah, go go win it. Easy. What? Go win it. Because, yeah, if you win it, then it's an easy payday for me at WrestleMania. You just lay down. Isn't that right? And he goes, oh, of course there's Roman. Cool. I'll, I'll be off then. Jimmy does his best, but he's only Jimmy Uso. He gets thrown out by, oh, I don't know, Biggie. And then a few minutes later, 
Jey Uso comes out. Jimmy, oh, wait, Jey Uso. Yeah. Not thought right. about him for a while. Yeah. Wait, um, Jimmy. Do you mean Jimmy? Jey Uso. Jay, Jay's comes been out. the one. Jey's been the one with Roman all this time. Yes, that's right. I who's watch gone in the I watch rum- wrestling. Who's gone, who's gone in the rumble? Sorry, Jimmy. He's gone in the rumble. Jimmy Uso. Okay, right. Okay, I'll get the little side of people. Jimmy Uso has been in the rumble. He's following Roman's orders, and but he gets thrown out. He doesn't win the rumble. Okay, but then, but because the rumble, the way the rumble works every year, Jack, is that some people start off in the ring, and then every two minutes someone else comes out. What I'm saying is, Jay is the one who's been more active recently. And then Jay Uso okay. comes out, <laughs> and he sings "World in Motion." He comes out and. He eliminates Big E and ends up somehow, some way, maybe Sid Vicious holds the other guy down and he gets thrown out. That's not how Rumble 92 happened. It doesn't matter. Jey Uso wins the Rumble. And Roman backstage is furious with Jimmy for letting the side down. I told you to go win the Rumble. How dare you? But Jay, how great is Jay, right? He went and did the thing. Good old Jay, right? Yeah, 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 proved himself. And he goes up to Jey Uso. Jay goes, Roman, I am Jimmy Uso. He goes, oh, Oh no, how awkward. What, no one noticed the difference? He goes, no, I just told the guys backstage, yeah, it's me, Jay, and I won. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, what a good sport you are, Jimmy, or Jay, whichever one you are. That's mint. So you're going to lay down for WrestleMania, right? He goes, of course I am Roman. And they go, ha, ha, ha. And then they stare at each other. And that's how Rumble goes off the air. Oh, sorry for, sorry for jumping the shaft there. I think you were playing the role of the fans. Of the audience. Going, no, no, yeah. no, Matthew, Matt, no, no, yeah. Matt. I've been. I've been. You have to get the Wikipedia abs- page for the Royal Rumble every year. The WWE puts on a show. Two like men start abs- off in the match. Professional wrestling is a sport in which matches <laughs> are predetermined. Um, I've uh, I've been absolutely bamboozled there, but I do quite like it. The only reason, though, that I'm giving it just a middle thumb, a, a bison thumb, is because I, I just feel like having one of the Usos win the Rumble is is kind of overlooking so many other viable. Candidates like your Cesaros, your Nakamuras, your Mark Lawrence's, your Alan Hansons. So I just feel like that's why I'm hesitant to go full thumbs up. But what do you think, Ross? Uh, uh, it's a flat no for me. Just Ooh. a flat, <laughs> hard no. <laughs> Nick Sugar going on nothing. Go on. I can't have main event Jay Uso go to waste. He has defied the calls that you just. Which Uso are you? Are you Jimmy or are you Jay? You both look the same. He has defied those odds and become main event Jay Uso. Proper Jay Uso. Definitely Jay and not Jimmy Uso. So I can't see that go to waste. So that's why I'm going to say no. Just because that little bit of the storytelling there. That's absolutely fine. I thought it would show that he's getting the power of being unrecognized to his advantage. Because mm. it's all right if you use it to yourself. And I've loved the Uso Roman Reigns stuff on SmackDown. And I thought that would get an easy point because I assume everyone else did. But I needed one serious one this time. So. That's absolutely all right. This is why the silly ones are picked more often than the serious ones. Just saying. That means it's time for Jack to do his thing. Yeah, I'm going to go to the Women's Royal Rumble now. Uh, And again, this is another serious one. Uh, I just did the same as what I did for the Men's Rumble. I looked at it and I thought, who do I want to win this Royal Rumble? And because, I guess because it's not that outlandish a pick, I feel a bit weird bringing it to the table. Excuse me, because it's just kind of obvious. But I'm probably going to go... No, I'm going to change it last second, lads. I'm going to change it last second. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. There's been a, there's been a change uh, here. That's right. John Barnes has entered the Women's Royal Room. Um, so I reckon... Yeah, I'll do it this way then. So Bianca Belair looks like she's going to win the Rumble. That was my original pick, Bianca Belair, because I think she's really good. Even if she's been reduced to doing silly obstacle courses recently on SmackDown. But... She eliminates loads of people. She breaks whoever's got the record at the minute. Is it Michelle McCool? Or is it like Shayna Baszler now? It might be Baszler. She breaks well, the record. both tied, yeah. She, bre- uh, yeah. she breaks the record. She's the most dominant. She's the cane of the Women's Royal Rumble. And then to the absolute outrage of the fans, obviously Charlotte Flair eliminates her. It looks like Charlotte's going to win. Everyone's very against this, of course. And then Charlotte gets basically... Is she heel? No, she's not. She turns heel and starts to batter the last person in the ring with a with a chair. The last person in the ring is uh, Io Shirai, who will either have lost the NXT title, but oh no, she can't have. It's already been NXT this week. She's ended the Rumble somehow, even though she's the NXT champion. And um, basically, she 
is going to get eliminated by Charlotte. Then out of the crowd comes Rhea Ripley. Wants revenge on Charlotte. Takes her out. Io eliminates Charlotte. Io is going to WrestleMania somehow. I forgot to take into account the fact that she's the NXT Women's Champion already. Maybe she can go for another belt and win both of them. Who who knows? But then you get two matches out of it. You get Io versus one of the other champions. And you get Charlotte versus Rhea Ripley too. Which Rhea Ripley should win. Because she kind of got screwed last year. Ah, I've, I've lost steam towards the end there. But that's my pitch. That's my pitch. It's a yes from me. I'm all Whoa. on board. <laughs> 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 Just because of the ending. Who cares about the plot holes on the way? It's got a nice ending. Thank you. Thanks. Matthew. He looks fuming. I care about the plot holes. Uh, no. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> I typed up that beautiful JGB thing that would make sense this year. You're like, oh, this would work if we take into account that everything being different about wrestling. So, yeah. I think this would work. I think um, Trish Stratus should come out. Oh, she isn't wrestling anymore. Oh, no. Sorry, that sounds very biting and horrible. I apologise, Jack. No, no, it's uh, okay. It's it's an it's a it's a nice. No, you note can give me a note. You can give me a note. Okay, okay. Okay, good. No. Okay. Uh, what's what's the reason? Just because because she's already the champion. It's badly written. Ah, uh, fair. Yeah, yeah, fair <laughs> enough. Yeah, it's a nice note. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, uh, Ross. What's your third and final pitch? Uh, as we all saw on SmackDown last week, a new superstar, a bona fide superstar, was born. Reginald D. Chardonnay is his full name yes. somewhere in my own head. Reggie's match with Sasha Banks was fantastic. Therefore, merely off the back of that, my third and final pitch is Reggie needs to be in the Rumble. This is a man who would get Len Goodman voting above a seven. He would get eights, nines, and tens off Len Goodman, so he would if Len's still on Strictly Come Dancing. But in the Rumble... He steals the show because, of course, he does. I've never seen a human being move like Reggie. Reggie can do it all. He can take Kofi Kingston. He can take John Morrison. He can take Naomi, and he can make them all look like amateur. So, yes, he steals the show. He doesn't win the match. He just steals the show and makes many memorable Reginald D. Chardonnay moments. Coming out of the Rumble, though, he realizes he's bigger and better than just being a Somalier. If he, if he wants to keep doing it in his spare time, that is fine. It's only for Carmella's benefit, obviously. But then, last week on SmackDown as well, there was a pun which Corey Graves made, which has been living in my head ever since because it was absolutely fantastic. He called Reggie the Cirque du Somalier. So I'm going to take that name (laughs) and I'm going to make it the name of Reggie's new faction on SmackDown. Coming out of the Rumble, Reggie has a proper, another star-making performance um, and he starts recruiting people to Cirque du Somalier. I'm looking at the likes of Ricochet. I'm looking at Casey Catanzaro. I'll throw Kalisto in there as a wild card. Why the hell not? What's he doing now? Nothing. He wants to join Cirque du Somalier, but it doesn't really matter about these pawns because it's all about the king, and our king is Reggie D. Chardonnay. Um, and uh, just the way I see this panning out, it's just like, you know, Robin in the mid-90s Batman films. I've seen them, like George Clooney and stuff like that, that sort of era, how they're like gnarly gymnasts, like gymnasts, but they can fight crime as well. Gymnasts, but badass. So... That would be like the catchphrase. Would be like, "No, nah, no, nah, we're not just gymnasts. We're gym nasties." Oh, Cirque du Somalier. There's my pitch. That's a yes. That's a yes. Easy yes for me there. I like that. I like. I like Reggie. Um, he wrestles a very weird style. Like a dance. Like you remember when Leo Rush got moved up to the main roster, but he wasn't allowed to actually hit a move on anyone, so he just avoided them. It's a bit like that. But it, it's, better. <laughs> it's so graceful. The the my favorite bit was when he did a he like did a backward roll and then was outside the ring somehow. Yeah. He's I've never phenomenal. seen a guy move like Reggie. What a talent. Because I think he obviously did come from the circus, didn't he? And right. He could do anything, him. You can he tell could do yeah. anything. He's he's fantastic. It's a yes from me, Matthew. Yeah, it's a yes from me, just for your usage of gnarly. And uh, you just unexpectedly going, you know, you know, Robin from the Batman. I'm like, oh my god, Ross is doing it. Ross is doing it, and then when I realised, no, wait, you probably just watch a YouTube video explaining it to you. Like, uh, no, I'm not that kind Jack. of guy. I'm not an arsehole. They're my <laughs> favourite. I love those Batman films. Michael Keaton. Then it it, yep. it changed into um, uh, Vic. I <laughs> said Vic Reeves. There, it turned into Vic Reeves. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah. You get going. Uh, Val Kilmer. Um, That's right. And then uh, George Clooney. You killed it. That's right. And, and then, yeah, and then that was it, wasn't it, for the, the mid 90s sort of crapness? Yeah, mm-hmm. and he summed it up very well. They were basically gymnasts that beat people up. It's like, 
Can't really argue that point, can I? So, you know what? Because you've ruined that for us, and because of how good... Re the fact that I also call him Reggie, as well. Like, you're on first name terms with him. I'm so impressed with you, Ross. The networking <laughs> you do. So, it's a thumbs up for you and for Cultaholic, I think. I, I'd like to point out, I, I have actually seen the George Clooney one with Mr. Freeze and, uh, and Poison Ivy. I've seen that one. And I was young enough that it didn't seem terrible, actually, at the time. I, I think would just a... like to point out that I have seen this film. <laughs> 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 I think there's a, there's, a, there's a wonderful novelty to those mid-90s Batman films. I'm a fan of how cheesy they are. Yeah. Especially the Dr. Freeze one. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Freeze. Mr. Freeze. Whatever. He's not got his qualification. Uh. Um, could Mason Ryan join? Because obviously he was a, he was the archer in Cir the real Cirque du Soleil. And uh, Stevie oh. Ray, Earthquake, Alundra, Blaze. All other, of them, just because of the... Other, other wrestlers in that Yeah, scene. okay. Um, <laughs> Matthew, it's your final pick. It certainly is. No moment too soon. Well, the one match, as of this video, that's been properly announced other than the Rumbles is Drew versus Goldberg. Oh, wait, and Owens versus... But never mind. Drew versus Goldberg is the only match that's been announced. So, it's Goldberg in a title match. It's the biggest match for some time. I think Goldberg's looking strong, looking handsome, looking as only Goldberg can look at this point of his career. <gasps> it gets Drew McIntyre down, got the spear, does the thing in the, the pre-piped in Goldberg chants, which just don't sound right, even though they were fake in WCW. The W ones don't sound right. And he turns around, and on the apron, it's Scott Hall with a taser. <laughs> Not ye, he goes, aye, it's me. Tases him, but still not enough for the mighty Goldberg, who thrashes and flails around like a fish. That's just out of water. He turns around and, who's that? It's Big Daddy Cool Diesel. He power bombs him, gives him the jackknife. The referee's tying his shoelaces at this point. And then Drew McIntyre bravely gets the pin on Goldberg, defends the title. And why's that? Does Diesel just have it in for Goldberg after all these years of beating him? Doesn't make any sense, does it? No. Raw the next night, Diesel comes to the ring and goes, Hom. and he stops eating his lasagna, and he goes up to Drew and goes, me and you for the title, finally to decide who is the greatest, lowest drawing champion of all time. Is it Drew? Is it Diesel? I know, I know, there's reasons for both, it wasn't their fault, blah, 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 but this is the decider. Can Michael who be is referee? the worst best at WrestleMania? <laughs> um, ha, hmm, hmm, nope. no, 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 it's a hmm, because because how can Nash? There'd have to be some stipulation on that match to make it all right. Have you got a stipulation in mind? I didn't. I, well, because it's WCW. I see. Uh, no, no, because Nash can't. Wrestle. Fifty quid on a pole. Okay, 50 quid. That's, that's what their um, what's that minimum guarantee deal was in WCW, in WF, in 95. It's a no from me, Matthew. I'm sorry. Oh. I'm sorry, Matthew. If I thought of a better gimmick, <laughs> would you say yes? I, I can't promise anything. Oh, I'm forget afraid. it then, then no. <laughs> uh, Ross. I'm going to go think? for a yes, mate, because anything <laughs> that keeps Goldberg away from that title and keeps that title. Around the lovely spelt waist of Drew McIntyre, I'm fully on board with. And I'm a big fan of Scott Hall, and I'm a big fan of Kevin Nash. It'd be, it'd be nice to see him back uh, back in the fold doing the wrestling in 2021. I'm all on board. Anything to keep that title away from Goldberg now. Yeah. Mm, I just thought the promos could be good, because Drew could do the inverse of the ones he's been doing against Goldberg. I used to watch you, and you were great, you know, about Goldberg. And he goes, Diesel used to watch you as a kid. And you're a crap. Yeah. <laughs> that would be really good. But no, I'll take I'll take my one up, one down. Jack, what have you got for us? Um, so this pitch is impossible. It would never work because the parties involved would never agree to it. But I want, I guess not entering 30 because 30 is going to be announced already. But enter number 29 is, to everybody's shock and horror, MJF from AEW. And he waltzes down to the ring. He does all right. He cheats a lot. He eventually gets eliminated. But everyone's like, what the hell? Where, what? What's happened there? We get to a, we get to Dynamite. And it turns out that MJF has signed some kind of contract that I've just made up for the purpose of making this pitch work. Where he's appeared for WWE. And now they're going to sign him. But not for 
like six months, which means that later on, all the way through, we get the summer of MJF. Because if you know the original summer of Punk storyline in Ring of Honor, he'd already signed for WWE, and then he was going to... He signed his contract on the Ring of Honor Championship. And then there was a mad story where they had to try and get the belt off him before he left for WWE. And eventually, I think it was Jamie Noble who beat him, which is fun. Um, anyway, MJF does that, basically. Uh, and we get the summer of MJF, where he's really horrible to everybody. But maybe he doesn't end up going. Maybe he turns on WWE. The problem is, obviously, that there's no way that anyone would agree to this. And MJF seems committed to AW because they think he's class and they're invested in his future, whereas WWE would probably make him part of the 24-7 <laughs> division and not, does, give him a, not give him a microphone. Go on. It doesn't matter that it's not possible. It's what you want to happen. I know, you, you, you dream, Jack. You can have big dreams. Sometimes I feel like I'm pushing it a bit too... What am I talking about? You try to... Yeah, you try to turn George Miz into, into chips. So, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I'll go for that. Then the summer of MJF after his appearance in the Rumble. That chips one was an all-timer. That was fantastic. Pe- people like it. That's, uh, yeah, but I, 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 I'm fully on board with this because uh, I haven't watched a single second of Impact since um, since they've invaded AEW. So if they AEW went and invaded somebody else, I'd quite like it. Yeah, but just MJ. Everyone else is Cody's like devastated and stuff. There's repercussions that he's turned on AEW. Well, it doesn't go into a full on like war between the two companies. I don't know because you'd feel like. Maybe if MJF then double crossed WWE and went back to AEW, it could. But at first, I think you need you need all of AEW to hate MJF, and he's an absolute fraud, and they despise him for wanting to leave. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, Matthew, what what do you think? I was going to give a quick thumbs up Oof. of Ross's old pick of putting Mrs. Dad into chips. I'm <laughs> going to give a quick thumbs up to Ross's old pick. Yeah, that was amazing. Thank you for reminding me of that, Ross. Jack, you have good ideas, but then you run out of steam and you're like, oh, this is rubbish, really. Is Oh, don't ignore me. This is just silly. I'm like, no, you're supposed to sell crap. Do it again. No. Do the very end bit again, but again. sound like you're trying to sell me a pencil. No. Go on. No. I'll give you a thumbs uh, down if you don't do it. Don't don't start that. Um, What's MGF going to do? What's going to do this Sunday, Jack? Go on. He's probably not going to do anything, is he? In, in all I, fairness. <laughs> Um, what I was going to say was, before we do round off this video, I'm just keen to hear your thoughts on who you think is going to be the number 30 entrant. Because at the time of recording, we don't actually know yet. It hasn't been announced yet. So, Ross, first of all, who do you think is actually going to be number 30? I'm getting ready for the both of you to laugh at me, right? Because I have seen it's been a certain anniversary this week. I have seen a certain Instagram post, which Reddit has reliably informed me, because I, I didn't read the comments back, comics back in the day, that uh, CM Punk on Instagram put a, a, a comic strip up of Batman when he's trying to like get his cape back on to go fighting once again after not no. fighting for a long time. And since it's happening on backstage, and since Punk is conspicuous by his absence, I'm going for it. Why not? CM Punk number 30. That would be, that'll be huge. Think of the views we'd do. Well, yeah. <laughs> but um, that's a bold shout. I'd be very excited if it did happen because I'm unashamedly... One of those dirty punk fanboys. And Matthew, who do you reckon? And he likes CM Punk as well. <laughs> I'm saying Edge. Because after the amount of injuries and stuff he's had, done, he's announced himself on Raw. Him at 30 is probably going to be the best solution for that. You know, ideally he'll get eliminated while his music's still playing. So it's like, all right, one spear on Dolph. They actually catch her this time, then he just leaves. And that's going to be the best thing for his body. <laughs> what do you think, Jack? I think it's going to be someone a bit underwhelming, like Ziggler was the first person who immediately sprang to mind for me. Because uh, Ziggler is just the very, I mean, not, nothing against the man personally, but he is the definition of an underwhelming number 30. Well, he, he was one year, wasn't he? That's why I'm thinking that, because he did. He was number 30, wasn't he, when he traded he in was the, the best, US title? The best, the best number 30 of all time. Traded in the US title one month, came back at a surprise number 30, eliminated after two minutes. <laughs> Fantastic yeah. scenes. Uh, absolutely amazing <laughs> and never explained left the US title left nothing said nothing still has been said shows up what's he gonna do it's the new improved he's out <laughs> the best absolute best I'll go for um, Otis why not I'll go for Otis to be number 30 there we go 
What about one and two in the ladies match? Um, why are they doing it this way? By the way, is that, are they are they saying that like um, thirty in the men's isn't going to be a big surprise? So let's just damper all expectations, but then thirty in the women's maybe is or something. I'm guessing that the women's number thirty is going to be a surprise. Yeah. I don't give a damn about my reputation. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Thought about that. <laughs> um, maybe it's that for for one and two. I'll go for. Um, it's just got to be a, a. It's just got to be two women who can just absolutely go all out, doesn't it? It's got to be two women who can just Rhea Ripley and Rhea Ripley and Charlotte Flair. Defying my earlier pitch, yes, but I'm going for Rhea Ripley and Charlotte Flair. What about what do you think? He looks disgusted up there, Matthew. What's wrong with you? I like half of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but think of the think of the vengeance. Think of the fire. No, somebody watch it going. Oh God, she's going to win, isn't she? So <laughs> Charlotte just chucks Rhea immediately. I'm yeah, still the it. best. I'm still better than you. That's right. She- Remember Rumble '92? My dad was in it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> She is Miss WrestleMania, after, uh, of course. Everyone calls her Miss WrestleMania, we learned this week on Raw. Yeah, because we hope, she goes, she, yeah, we hope she's going oh. to Miss WrestleMania. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was fantastic. Thank you. you. pre-prepared that? I was off the, well, off the dome. Uh, that was wit. Um, oh, bloody hell. The only but, thing I've got now, because I can't think of any interest in one or two people, so uh, Dakota Kai. Uh-huh, That's good. she's interesting. She is interesting. And I want Rhea Ripley to win, and I don't mind her. Doing the Lesnar and just, all right, cool. Number three, out your gun. Number four, all right, cool, out your gun. Fair enough, fair enough. Like a factory worker. Throw him on. <laughs> and well, that's all I've got. That's been a fun video, guys. Thanks very much for joining me in this little journey. Um, I'm, I am genuinely excited for the Royal Rumble every year, even though, you know, we always come off that dead period at the end of the year. Oh, go on. Never mind the Rumble the itself. What are you going to be eating and or drinking during it? Don't know, actually. Several <sighs> cans of Monster. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Uh, yeah, she was. I don't want to eat anything too stodgy because I don't want to get tired before I've got to do my video. So don't I have know. prepared myself. I haven't had any takeaways. Or out. I've been a nice, healthy... Saving well, it up for the Rumble. Kinda. I'm going to have my dirty meal whilst watching the Rumble. What's your detail? dirty meal, Matthew? I haven't decided yet. Turn me on. What, what's the options? Not a Palmo. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm done. Um, but I might get... Chinese duck mm. with the oh, with the plum sauce. Mm. Oh god, I'm thinking about it right now. Pan- pancake, no pancake. Yeah, 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 yeah. pancake. Yeah, pancake, roll them yeah, up, yeah. and then like, oh, something's happened, and I have to tweet on my keyboard, and it's just covered in plum sauce. And then, like, <laughs> the, the, like, and a you disgusting lick, mess. You lick your keyboard. Oh, oh I'll have to. It's such a, the next day, the day after that, nothing but plum sauce in my room. Oh, who's eating it? Oh, it was me. What about yourself, Ross? You haven't got like a favorite? I know, you're, like, obviously you're healthy as hell, but like anything. All right. Um, no, I, I've got no idea. Uh, dirty Domino's. Why the hell? It's not a dirty Domino's. I think Domino's is overrated, me. Their chicken wings are lovely, but their pizza is average. Mm. I've always mm. had all right Domino's, but maybe, I don't know, actually, I'm not going to get this to be able to spend another hour and a half talking about this, but what about yourself, Jack? I don't know. What's, just what's, my, what's a takeaway that I enjoy? If I've, if I've got nothing to do, like for the rest of that day or the next day, then I do love an Indian takeaway. Chicken mm. jalfrezi, kima mm. naan. But that's like a one for when you've got nothing to do. Me and my mates made the mistake once of having a takeaway curry before a night out and we just didn't want to go on the night out. Like, it just... Yeah. just what's the point? you weighed, weighed down like a boulder in your stomach just yeah. trying when you're trying to bop on the dance floor. I tell you I what, think, though, we, we should we should do nine dishes for the Royal Rumble. Never mind pitches. Just do a separate video. We oh. should. We should. Ben and Pierre on Triple Jump, they've done some kitchen-based content before, haven't they? But that was before the lockdown, unfortunately. Mm. I don't know if we can do that. But that's one for the future. Kevin Mash. Oh, Kevin Mash. Oh, oh, I see. Right, it's going to be like that. Oh, okay. I, uh... Yeah. Um, well, right. you, have to, you have to come prepared in this battle of wits with Ross. Bloody hell, I'm not ready for that. Let's go Scarpa. Until next time, when we do fast lane pitches, we will bring the food. They do <laughs> call me, Matthew. They do call me Harvey Whittleman. Whittle. What? Whittle. Harvey Whittleman. Oh, Whit. Whit. Whittleman. Whittleman. Yeah. Oh, I was trying to think what the hell a Whittle was. <laughs> I was thinking of what food it was Harvey, as well, yeah. Harvey Whittleman, because I've got all of the wit and the video. It's been the 45 minutes. <laughs> I was going to say, he was like, yeah, what a great sound. Oh, God, that was awful. <laughs> Jack, what's the end? End it. 
And on that bombshell, thanks very much for watching Nine Pitches for the Royal Rumble 2021. Uh, hope you enjoy the show on Sunday. Leave your own pitches in the comment section down below and we'll have a right good laugh going through those. And uh, stay safe out there. Stay positive. Enjoy the Rumble and we'll see you very soon. <laughs>